Yo, 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 welcome to Hard Pass. I am your host, Jacques Slade. It's the show that is today years old when they found out that Dion Waiters is going by the name of Bubble Cheese inside the NBA bubble, and now he's selling merch with that name on it. They got them Bubble Cheese. They got the Bubble Cheese shirts. Now, according to some research, his actual nickname is Philly Cheese, so he switched it for the bubble. But if you Google Bubble Cheese, you get, oh wow, really? I'm kind of surprised, but also not really. I mean, he has to know, right? Right? Here's some hot takes. So Rihanna and ASAP Rocky interviewed each other over what looks like the cleanest version of Zoom I've ever seen to talk about skincare, among other things, during an interview session for GQ and Vogue. Sure, the eye roll Riri gives at the start of the video is probably going to be the next meme sensation, but I can't get over how she says intestines. I would never eat under any circumstance. Chitlin. I just went to say it, an intestine of any animal. Like, I get it, accents, dialects, and whatnot, but she gets away with saying that because she's freaking Rihanna. I say it that way and I'm getting canceled by surgeons and butchers. All right, filing this one under things I never want to see again is this clip from Warframe, a super popular free to play game that I only remember from when the PS4 launched. Thanks, I was gonna have some kare kare and chicken adobo with some margarine rice and now I want a hard pass on it. Look, just because it's free to play doesn't mean you can just do whatever and gross me out. Uh, movie theaters, they're starting to come back in the US after months of closure due to the pandemic, which you know is still around. Hashtag wear a mask, people please. Uh, looks like if you want to watch Tenet, you're gonna have to follow some very strict and very necessary guidelines, which makes me wonder how we're gonna do the sneaker con whenever that gets popping up again. Like that trading pit of hype beast, or as I like to call it now, that clip from Warframe could happen if everybody wore Supreme masks. But I would love to see like a drive-in version just so I can see all the hype beast moms driving their kids to trade their off-whites and Yeezys. Bless you all, hype beast moms. You have way more patience than I do. Uh, Patrick Beverly, AKA Dave Chappelle's When Keeping It Real Goes Wrong sketch comes to life drew the ire of Chris Paul and Udonis Haslam during the players meeting about possibly shutting down the bubble season. Pat Bev constantly interrupted executive director Michelle Roberts when she tried to talk and when she asked if she could finish, he reportedly said, no, I pay your salary. Wow. Now, Bev has since said that they have since resolved his issue with Roberts, not sure who to believe there, but I can only imagine how that scenario would have played out in the 90s if instead of CP and UD, it was Charles Oakley in that meeting. Now, that's what I miss about the old days of basketball. So Jordan's brand, Bright Future, ain't bright for Luka, Zion, and Tatum. Listen. The NBA bubble in its brief existence has been a symbol of many things to many people. For fans of the game, it's been a chance to return to some semblance of normalcy as they get to watch their teams get back to the business of chasing a championship. For the league, it's been a way to salvage what could have been a lost year that greatly affects their bottom line. And for the players, it's been a struggle as they not only have to step into an environment sealed away from their families, but They've had to do so while also trying to lead a fight for social justice, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But one thing we haven't talked about are the sneaker brands, in particular, Jordan brand. Okay, we have talked about the brands, but it's mostly the rare Nikes and Jays PJ Tucker has been getting sent to his sneaker suite that fills me with anxiety. Quick, if you were to name five of the brightest young stars in the league right now, chances are Jason Tatum, Luka Doncic, and Zion Williamson would be three of the five names you would mention. It just so happened that those three guys are all Jordan brand athletes. Tatum and Doncic are their respective team's number one option as they make their playoff runs. And while Zion didn't have the best bubble experience, I find it hard to imagine he won't pull it all together in year two. Quietly, the Jumpman has built the best young roster of talent for the Air Jordan 34, the Jordan Elevate, and whatever retro they happen to be selling that week. And for me, it's kind of a problem. You see, all three of these guys should either have signature shoes right now or should be on their way to having one. But there's one small snag in my opinion. The Jordan brand deal is both a gift and a curse. Yeah, being signed to Jordan brand means you get all of the latest Jordan gear that any athlete would love to own, including all those retros that DJ Khaled keeps telling us he has meetings with. 
Like, is he negotiating with his shoes or talking to them? Because it's starting to be a little weird, right? But hey, he gets them early, so good job by you, Khaled. Anyways, when it's time for Jason or Luca or Zion to get a signature shoe to call their own, it's not really their shoe per se, it's a Jordan shoe. Like it says on the name, Jordan CP or Jordan Why Not or Jordan Mellow. MJ will always come first. It's not like when you have a signature shoe with Nike or Adidas. Nobody is thinking about Phil Knight when you discuss the Nike LeBron line and most people don't even know who Adi Dossler is. I bet you there's a segment of the population that probably think Kanye signed James Harden to his massive Adidas deal. But when we used to be able to go to shoe stores and check out what was in the Jordan section, your first instinct isn't to go for the CPs or the Mellows no matter how they look or how well they perform. It's the retros or whatever the current model is. And that's never going to change. So a Jordan Tatum might sound cool at first, but there's a ceiling to it. And yes, it's the roof, like MJ said. Only his airness can touch the sky. Even J. Cole's new RS Dreamer shoe with Puma can aim higher than a Jordan Luca because Cole's not being overshadowed by a legend like Clyde Frazier. And here I am praying to the sneaker gods that the Jordan Zion doesn't go the way of the Jordan Vindicate, even though they look cool and I'm still waiting for a retro of those. Hello, anybody listening? So my hope is that if this sneaker big three that Jordan brand has collected in a short period of time does indeed live up to the hype, I hope they do the right thing and direct them back to Nike or maybe even Converse if they're feeling spicy. It'd be sad to see them toil in sneaker obscurity through no fault of their own, Jordan's shadow, well, it's honestly just that big. Now it's time for the heat check, the place you come to find out all the sneaker information you need. If you need sneaker recommendations, sneaker dates, we have it right here. Keep in mind that just because I make jokes about a particular shoe that's coming out, it doesn't mean I'm casting judgment on you. At least not a lot of judgment on you. And with that being said, first up, we have the Nike ISPA Drifter Split. This is on the first for 200. Like the $500 Road Warrior from a few weeks ago, these unique kicks look like prototypes that became self-aware and escaped Nike's famous R&D building. Inspired by Tabby Boots, the split toe deconstructed upper and reused Nike Zoom X foam combined for a shoe that I feel like is either going to be the best thing ever to walk on or something I put on once and I never want to see again. And I think that's kind of the way Nike wants it. Uh, we also have the Nike Dunk Low Disrupt. This is on the first as well for 110. Look, I get what Nike is trying to attempt here. Instead of just doing the lazy and disgraceful shrink it and pink it strategy when it comes to women's releases, the Disrupt is meant to be a modernized take on the Dunk. But why mess with the classic though? I think everyone would be happy if Nike just made Dunks the way that they are, but in greater quantities. That seems the most logical thing to me. Uh, then we have the Adidas Ultra Boost 1.0. This is the NCAA pack. This is on the fourth for 180. It's a blast of colors as eight Adidas schools each get special Ultra Boost 1.0s dressed in their primary colors with Velcro tongues that lets them replace the usual three stripes logo with some school spirit. That's actually pretty cool. Then we have the Air Jordan 1 Baroque Brown. These are on the fourth for 170 and it's uh, it's different. I can't tell you right now if it's good different, bad different, or just whatever different. On paper, these colors should not match. There's no way these colors on this shoe should come together and make something people will want to buy. And yet, here we are on Heat Check talking about it. Huh. And then my pick of the week is the Air Jordan 5 Golf Low Black Grape. These drop on the 4th for 220. Now, I've been singing the praises of these since they were first revealed, and I hope that I'm able to secure a pair to add to my growing collection of Jordan golf shoes. Sure, I'll probably never reach golf bro status like Brooks Kepka, but I can at least look good out there, and that's what's important. And now for a heat check on the Ball family. More specifically, LaBella Ball. By the time this episode comes out, it's possible that Puma will have announced that they have signed Melo to a mammoth rookie sneaker deal. Oh, if you're wondering where I stand when I think of Melo, I still think of and will always think of this guy. I'm just surprised nobody made a only Melo we acknowledge is Anthony shirt like they did for Biggie. Anyways, this move signals a big change for the family who once tried to build a brand of their own led by their father, LeVar, and eldest son, Lonzo. Whatever big baller brand lacked in slick marketing and products that shipped on time, they made up for in bravado. It's like LeVar says, he speaks things into existence and for a brief period of time, he did make the triple B's mainstream. 
but eventually the brand had to produce and between lackluster releases, internal strife with business associates, and Lonzo struggling to become the superstar his father predicted, it hasn't been easy for Big Baller brand. But there's still time for LaMelo to turn things around. If he becomes a high lottery pick in the upcoming NBA draft and shows flashes of being a transcendent talent, that will be enough for LeVar to start creeping back into our lives again. Just not with BBB, because right now, the only BBB we acknowledge is the Better Business Bureau. It'll be with Puma, a brand on the upswing and will do whatever they can to protect LaMelo from the Allen Fosters of the world. One way or another, whether we like it or not, the Ball family is going to be a part of our basketball lives for years to come. And most, if not all of it, lies on the shoulders of the other Melo. Good luck, kid. And apologies to Jello, who we do acknowledge. I'm giving my excitement for a Melo and Puma partnership eight big baller t-shirts out of 10 of our appearance on first take. I see it coming already. All right, and now, it's time for another not hard pass where we actually take a look at something in the culture that we could do a lot more of, like allies. This week, the NBA's player took the monumental move of stepping off the court in the middle of the playoffs to vent their frustration on the current social climate. It was so powerful and groundbreaking that it affected other leagues like the WNBA, and arguably the leader when it comes to addressing social injustices, and Major League Baseball, the most stick to sports, big time sports league around. The shooting of Jacob Blake in Kenosha, Wisconsin was a flashpoint moment. Even though everybody from LeBron James to Marcus Smart had been calling on Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron to arrest and charge those responsible for the murder of Breonna Taylor, and Russell Westbrook had worked with the Players Association to create shirts that honor Ahmaud Aubrey. George Floyd, Sandra Bland, and Tamir Rice, among others, and the floors that they play on say Black Lives Matter, it still feels like it doesn't. Now, before somebody in the comment comes at me with their, but Jacob Blake was dot, 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 I'm just going to repeat what Jalen Brown said, a man who was wise beyond his years. He said, are we not human beings? Is Jacob Blake not a human being? I don't care if he did something 10 years ago, 10 days ago, or 10 minutes ago. If he served his sentence and he was released back into society, he still deserves to be treated like a human and does not deserve to be shot in the back seven times with the intent to kill. His kids will never unsee that. His family will never unsee that. See, it was all starting to feel performative, these interviews, these shirts, and the signs. Not because the players were just going through the motions, but because they weren't seeing changes. Although I wouldn't be surprised to hear from some players if they were feeling this was all for nothing and just wanted to go home. In that same meeting where Patrick Beverly and Michelle Roberts were having their tense conversation, she also wanted to make a point with the players. Don't give up your platform unless you're going to do the work. She said, are you going to do what Maya Moore did? If you're telling me that you're going to do that, then I'm the last person to stop you. In fact, I'll push you out the door if you're saying I'm going to stop playing basketball in order to work exclusively for the moment. But ask yourself, is anyone going to be sticking a mic in your face if you go back to fill in the blank town and don't play and don't protest? Would they even have a mic in your face right now if you weren't here in the bubble and you were home? Don't ignore the power of your GD platform. And you can see that power already being used for good. Yes, the league and its owners have pledged to do better by putting money into worthwhile causes and hiring people of color in prominent positions of power. As part of their return to play, every team has pledged to use their arena as a voting station for the election and new commercials will run that will encourage people to get involved. And while Jalen Brown could use his platform in the NBA bubble to not only play the game that he loves and we love, and we can help as well. I'm not going to use my platform to tell people who to vote for, but I will use it to tell people to register to vote and to vote early and to fight for those who are preventing others from being able to vote. I respect my audience's ability to make decisions about who they want to support politically, even if I don't agree with them. Unless it's racist, misogynistic, homophobic, QAnon, nonsense. In that case, go f yourself and find another sneaker on Boxing Channel. We'll be fine without you. The world isn't going to change tomorrow because LeBron or Jalen says it has to. But 
If we'll change in time, if they speak up, I speak up, you speak up, and everybody around you does. You know, so you can be better today than you were yesterday. Somebody great said that once, and we just have to have that sort of mentality. That's gonna do it for the show this week. Thank you guys for watching Hard Pass. I'll see you next week, but not before I show you how I'm gonna spend my retirement one day, going through my storage unit of sneakers and turning them into TikTok videos. I was running through the six with my woes. Through the six with my woes. Or, you know, whatever they call TikTok when I'm retirement age, which is like 80 plus years from now. I'll see you guys next week. Peace.